Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Elder Scrolls Online, Episode 6. I'm your host, Rob, with MMORPG.com. We are three weeks away from the official launch and I have a number of news items for you this week. The last beta test starts this weekend, Elder Scrolls Online releases a limited edition book, and the question of the week from the community. First, let's talk about the book. Yesterday, Bethesda announced that they were taking pre-orders for the limited edition Heroes Guides to the Elder Scrolls Online. These are three lore books that are packed into a clamshell box that can be used for display. They also include a numbered lithograph, and only 10,000 of them will be made. The more I talk these books up and show off the pages to you, the more I actually want to purchase one myself. That said, I just can't bring myself to part with the $100 one of these will set you back. They sure are pretty, though. The final ESO beta weekend is upon us. While ZeniMax so far has held to their guns about not having an open beta, if you've been unable to get into a beta by this point, you haven't been trying hard enough. In fact, we still have about 20,000 beta keys on MMORPG.com, so what are you waiting for? Run over and grab a key and get to in-game to see if the game lives up to your expectations. For those of you watching this on YouTube, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link to the page where you can get your beta key in the comments below. There are a couple of big changes you should see in this beta weekend. Hopefully, the first of which is you were able to skip the starter islands. Personally, I like them, but they weren't everyone's cup of tea. This change didn't actually make it into the previous beta, so hopefully you get to experience it for yourself in this. For the Europeans out there, you'll be able to get to play on the EU mega server. No more transatlantic latency for you, my friends. You'll now be able to PvP and Cyrodiil with the best of them. Unless you aren't any good. Then feel free to stay on the North American servers. At least then you'll have an excuse for losing, and I'll have more people to feed me alliance points. Kidding. I'm more than likely the one feeding you alliance points. A recent change on the PTS that I'm not sure will make it into this weekend's beta that has a number of crafters like myself excited is the increase to bag space. Your character will now have access to 60 instead of 50 bag slots, and your bank will start off with 30 additional slots. They plan on making later upgrades more expensive to offset this. In the end, you'll end up paying about the same. It'll just be a little easier to bear the brunt of limited bag space at the beginning of the game. That brings us to the community question. Where do I collect the materials to feed my horse? As it turns out, this is a pretty simple one to answer. First, all you have to do is approach an NPC stable master and click on View Stable. You'll then be prompted to go ahead and have three different choices at the top, which are buy, sell, or currently view your stable. In the purchase, you see there's a common horse, draft horse, gated horse, imperial horse, and light horse. The imperial horse is the collector's edition horse, and the draft horse appears to be the only horse that starts off with carrying capacity which will be good for you that want more bag space. Here you can see I can sell White Lightning for one gold and now I'm actually going to rename him to Mr. Ed because he's a horse of course. Next you'll notice the different attributes, speed, stamina, and capacity. Some people call stamina stability because it keeps you from being knocked off your horse but it also lets your horse sprint for longer periods of time. Feeding your mount apples will increase its speed, feeding your mount hay will increase its stamina, and feeding it oats will increase its carrying capacity. You can also purchase additional stable spots, which start off at 10, 100, and the next one is 1,000 gold, which I haven't bought yet because that's a little bit of highway robbery. I would like to hop on my bully pulpit here for one second real quick and complain about something, and that is the carrying capacity for the horses. It cost me 250 gold to buy one set of oats, which takes 20 hours for the cooldown and increases his carrying capacity by one. Before that, they don't carry any. In an effort not to be that guy, and you know the one I'm talking about, the player that complains about something being able to happen in game because it couldn't happen in real life, I'll stick away from the fact that it's a horse and should be able to carry a lot of stuff. But I can carry 60 items at the beginning, and it can't carry one. What the hell kind of lazy horses is ZeniMax selling us? As you can see, mounts are actually pretty easy. You just go ahead and you purchase the materials from the Stable Master, and you do not have to go out and find them. That's it for this week, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to click the like button and subscribe. If you really liked it, go ahead and tell a friend about it, too. If you have any questions for next week, put them in the comments below. We can also continue the conversation on social media. You can reach me on Twitter at Graculin. That's G-R-A-K-U-L-E-N. Also, continue to check MMORPG.com for all the latest MMO and ESO-related news. Have a great week, folks.